It is December 13th today. I can't believe it. We're already halfway through the month, but I thought I would show you the BTS behind the scenes of filming a uh, one of those one item a whole bunch of ways videos. I just spent the morning uh, doing some writing, but I thought I would take the afternoon to do this. And uh, this is the dress that I've styled a whole bunch of different ways. I hope you like it. Dresses I find are so difficult. Um, in terms of versatility, so I don't own that many. That's why uh, Boro in Toronto, it's a dress and clothing rental company. They actually kindly lent me this dress to use because I wanted to find something that was simple but festive enough, kind of like a cocktail dress that I hope most of you might have something similar in your closet that maybe you're just not quite sure how to wear this season. So hopefully you like that on Sunday. Okay, December 14th, I had a little bit of a hectic day. Uh, car went to the garage unexpectedly, and then I drove uh, partway through horrible icy road conditions. But now I am here, which is so fun and exciting. Um, you have seen me talk about Sava de Soie. Pretty much all of my knits are from uh, this place right here. They are Montreal-based, but this is their store in Ottawa. And they're having a little sank a set. They are celebrating the launch of these wool Christmas tree ornaments. So because Sava de Soie exclusively works with knitwear, all of these ornaments are made with the leftovers from whatever their production, I guess, fabrics are. Um, so I thought that was so cool that they are repurposing their scraps. Aren't they cute? Okay, uh, second party of the evening. I am at my, well, my a photographer who I frequently work with um, has set up his studio for a retro Christmas party. So I shopped my closet for this look. It is not um, festive, but I think it's, hoping it's retro. So I have my vintage hoops, my mustard yellow turtleneck, because I felt like that was pretty retro, uh, my leather jacket, my vintage belt, which I think it looks like it came from the 80s. Uh, and then some old, very old wide leg denim, which I think you've seen before. Um, and these Andy Wolf ombre glasses. Uh, and I've parted my hair, trying to channel Nana Muscuri, but uh, probably, probably could have done a better job on my hair. But anyway, um, it was a very hectic day. Um, so yeah, this is... This is the studio where I often work as a wardrobe this time. I got home from Ottawa a little bit late, uh, went for a late run. I don't normally run when it's dark out, but I felt like it was really necessary. Just had to do it. So run, and then it's my husband's, uh, the company that he works for. It's their Christmas party tonight. So I'm going to change and get ready for that and uh, still deciding what I'm going to wear. Okay, so I am ready for this party. Originally, I had put on an all black ensemble, surprise, surprise, with my uh, black jumpsuit with the wide, the beautiful wide leg, and then my double-breasted black blazer with the gold buttons on top, and my patent leather boots underneath, and it looked so good, and I had my gold hoop earrings, and like, it looked so chic, I think, in my opinion, but it was, it was like, funeral chic and not festive and it's the holidays and I kind of felt like I should have been dressed a little bit more festive so I changed and I put on this comfy sweater that I really like it's from Cezanne but I found it secondhand on uh, Vestiaire Collective Vestiaire Collective and um, then I put on my vintage red plaid skirt. I feel like there's nothing that says Christmas more than red plaid. Uh, and then I was able to keep my patent over the knee boots. So I feel a little bit more festive. I feel a little bit better about this outfit than the all black one. Okay, December, what are we today? 16th. And we had the lovely work party for my husband's work and his colleagues. And um, I woke up, posted this week's video which was the cocktail dress a whole bunch of different ways i hope you all liked that and um had a little bit of a fiasco of a baking day because i'm trying to make 
well, I think I'm succeeding, pizzelle, which are these little Italian, actually mine are little, but they come bigger as well. They're like this little Italian cookie that you put in, it looks like a little bit like a waffle iron. Anyway, normally my mom and I make these together every year, but since I've moved, um, I have had to make these by myself. I normally make these little cookies for clients and then I go around and I drop drop them off to some of my clients to say Merry Christmas and thank you and all that. So I have to go into the city this week, so I thought I will bake some of these up by myself. Um, I've not, I'm not gonna lie, I've had to call my mom a couple times already today <laughs> to uh, avoid some crises, but it's fine, it's all good. Um, so I thought while I'm doing this, I thought I would answer some of the Q&As that you had asked that did not require um, or that don't require any visual aids. So I hope you don't mind. I do have to kind of pay attention to this iron so I won't be able to look at the camera all the time. Uh, otherwise, we might have a disaster on our hands. So um, the first question that I thought was really interesting was, um, what are some slow fashion blogs or YouTubers that I follow? And I thought this was a really interesting question. I follow a little bit of both YouTubers and bloggers that are in the sustainable space uh, and also not in the sustainable space. And I find, I find when you only follow people who have the same mentality and style ethos as you, you're kind of you're staying within your own comfort zone and within your own realm. So I follow all types. Um, on YouTube, uh, the, my, I think I have top three who I kind of always try and catch their videos because I either learn something or I get major inspiration. Um, number one is Audrey Coyne. I'm sure a lot of you follow her as well. I think I've seen some of your comments on her videos as well. Audrey is based in the Southern US, I think. And her focus is really on uh, classic style and finding quality pieces. And I think she always looks fabulous and she's always very poised and composed. And I just, I really admire that because I feel like I'm a little sporadic and wild. Um, so I really, I like that kind of sense of calm that she brings to her videos. Um, the other YouTuber that I follow is um, Sing. Is her last name Hansen? I don't know. She's Danish uh, from Use Less. I think a lot of you follow her as well. She's um, just so cool. I really like her style. I like how creative she is, especially with her DIY stuff. Not necessarily, sorry, her DIY, but like her mending videos. Um, I really find them very useful. So those are kind of the two YouTube, actually, sorry, I have four. So two in the sustainable space, Audrey and Singh, and then the two in the non-sustainable space are um, Karen Britchick, who I did a Outfit Envy uh, video of. I absolutely love Karen. I think her sense of style is just so phenomenal, and I love how it's so different from mine, and I think that she really inspires me to, you know, look for different textures and colors and I love her vintage. She has such a killer eye for vintage and secondhand and thrifting. Um, and I, I get so much inspiration from her. I just think she's phenomenal and I love how she loves her clothes. There's so much good style happening on her channel that it's just such a great source of inspiration. Um, so that's Karen. Um, I also follow another Canadian girl called Allegra Shaw. Another one who is not necessarily sustainable or fashion focused, but I think she's got a great sense of style. She's, it seems like she's really trying to focus on investment pieces and not shopping so much and doing so many hauls and things like that. So um, I think she's got a killer sense of style. I love her videos. She is the like original, um, changing videos person like that's that's where I got my idea to do one piece a whole bunch of different ways it was because of Allegra oh 
And on Instagram, I think the other additional person that I could recommend is a Canadian girl based out of Vancouver and her name is Elim. I hope I'm pronouncing it right or Elim. I'm not sure. Elim Chu. She's also a stylist, but she has an amazing monthly newsletter that is always full of just really beautiful resources to live a more mindful life. I'll link to all of these people and their like main platforms below. Fashion trends that need to die. Oh geez. I almost forgot about these. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna put these one on the not so great pile and uh, give those to my husband to eat. Um, <laughs> sorry. But the first one, and this is actually quite a popular style, especially amongst the sustainable set. Like I see, it's almost like the kind of minimalist uniform, I would call it. And it is anything, it is just, it's not even a specific trend. It's the um, combination of a midi length hemline so a midi length that, that hemline that kind of cuts you right right at the middle of your calf and ankle boots this combination kills me i should say either a bare leg like not one whole color that goes from shoe to the hemline like there's that break and i think even women who are like glamazon six foot three this style, when you have the break in the hemline and like a couple of inches of skin and then another harsh break at the ankle, I just, it's like, I just, I think it's so unflattering. And I guess that, that's something that I'm just really not a fan of. Um, unless, like I said, you have like an opaque stocking or something or something to keep the line going because this I just think is so unflattering. Um, and the second trend that I'm really not a fan of is, uh, are the ginormous, they were, I think it was Balenciaga who kind of started this, um, those ginormous dad sneaker running shoes. I think, I mean, I love shoes. <laughs> Maybe I'm like old and I'm not a cool kid anymore because I don't love this style, but it's just, it's so bulky. Um, and I think there is footwear that is just so much more like, architecturally beautiful even um, that is so much more flattering that can be worn I just think it also I think just bothers me because these things are selling for like five thousand dollars a pop and you can literally go to your parents basement and wear your dad's shoes next question was what inspired me to start this channel so I had been kind of blogging and Instagramming about slow fashion and sustainability for a while but the whole reason even why I kind of switched from just a regular fashion blog to slow fashion and minimalism was not only that this is part of my lifestyle and this is what I do, so I figured I might as well share it. I just felt like you're not going to change consumer behavior by, you know, showing everybody pictures of dying polar bears in the Arctic. I mean, that's even more overwhelming. That makes us feel even more helpless. But I just felt like the messaging around being more mindful and being more of a conscious consumer and really looking at your closet and appreciating what's in there already, I felt like no one was coming at it from an angle of like, hey, let's have fun with this. It was more like making people feel guilty, which I'm Italian and I'm Catholic. I have enough guilt in my life already. So um, that's why I started the channel. Um, what is my education and career background? My background is actually in finance. I have an undergrad degree in um, commerce with a specialization in finance, and I actually worked uh, in international finance for about three years after I graduated university. I was an underwriter for an export credit agency. So it was actually a great job, um, really interesting work. Like I was interacting with multinational companies all over the world, supporting Canadian exporters, um, but I just felt like my skills, my true skills, weren't being put to good use. So I left. I left a really good pension and a really good salary to um, manage a small locally owned luxury boutique and then that's I slowly evolved into freelancing um, and that will lead me to my next question which is what else do I do besides YouTube if anything and yes that led me to uh, freelance wardrobe styling not for individuals but more on the commercial side so that's the wardrobe styling part of my job and I also do um, freelance copy and content writing for mostly, actually, all local businesses. One of the last questions was, um, are there books or resources for curating a conscious wardrobe? And 
this is going to be a to be con to be continued um, perhaps in my next vlog simply because it'll probably be a little bit of a lengthy answer because I have actually had a hand in um, kind of creating a guide um, for purchase that I think is is pretty great. I think it's a great resource that combines both personal style, um, all of those styling hacks that I talk about in my videos, and also just ways to be more planet friendly in your wardrobe choices. Um, so I'm gonna talk about that next time because um, things are burning and my hands are full of batter now. So I feel like... Okay, good morning, Monday, December 17th. Cannot believe it is so close to Christmas already. Uh, I totally forgot when I was at the gym this morning, I remembered to mention the two podcasts that I listened to almost religiously for sustainable fashion and slow fashion. And they are both very different in terms of their hosts, but equally uh, inspiring and informative and easy to listen to, not preachy at all. And that the first one is Conscious Chatter by Kestrel Jenkins. And the second is Wardrobe Crisis by Claire Press. I'll link to both of these podcasts below. I'd love to know what you listen to, what your favorite podcast is, whether it's fashion or style re related or not. So leave them in the comments below. I hope I'm gonna leave this vlogmas here for now. It was, it was a little bit more chatty and longer than usual, but I figured it's vlogmas and um, it's a pretty accurate representation of what I've been up to. So hopefully you don't mind it. Um, see you in the next one. Ciao!